Ukrainian President Zelensky has made it clear where he sees the future of his country in the EU. Following the Russian invasion, he called for his country's immediate admission to the European Union on February 26. On February 28, Zelensky signed an official application for EU membership. The EU states have expressed their solidarity with Ukraine's application for membership, and Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, literally said, you are one of us, and we want you in. But why is Ukraine not yet a member of the EU, even though it is one of the largest countries in Europe? Ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s and in the course of the EU's eastward enlargement, Kiev has been hinting that Ukraine would like to join the EU. The Ukrainian foreign minister at the time announced that the country was seeking integration into European and Euro-Atlantic structures. He said, Our full EU membership is our priority because it is the EU that will shape the image of Europe in the current century. In the year 1998, the first EU-Ukraine summit took place in Vienna, at which Ukraine called for a long-term EU accession perspective. The European Commission responded to this in the year 2001 and presented a strategy paper for shaping its relations with Ukraine. The paper focused primarily on supporting the country with structural and economic reforms. After Viktor Yushchenko won the runoff election for the presidency in the year 2004, primarily due to his foreign policy course towards EU membership, the issue of Ukraine joining the EU in the near future gained new momentum. Ukraine and the EU then signed an action plan in the year 2005, which, however, still did not offer any real prospects of accession for Ukraine, but rather focused on economic issues. Viktor Yanukovych, who was elected in the presidential elections at the beginning of the year 2010 and had already been accused of systematic electoral fraud in the elections of the year 2004, was subsequently elected as the new head of state. Although he was still interested in EU membership, he also took major steps towards rapprochement with Russia. For example, he reaffirmed cooperation in the Eurasian Economic Union formed by Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan. At the same time, Ukraine also wanted to form an association and free trade agreement with the EU. However, the EU did not tolerate Ukraine's simultaneous membership of an economic union with Russia. Putin, on the other hand, declared that Russia would implement so-called protective measures if an EU agreement was signed. Ukraine therefore had to make a decision. The Ukrainian president decided against an agreement with the EU, which came as quite a surprise to many Ukrainians and led to the months of demonstrations and protests of the so-called Euromaidan. These ultimately led to the fall of Yanukovych in February 2014. The newly elected government concluded the EU agreement, which was intended to promote deeper political ties, stronger economic ties and respect for common values, but at the same time, a civil war broke out in the east of the country and Russia annexed Crimea. With Ukraine now preoccupied with severe internal unrest, it was not until 2018 that the Ukrainian parliament voted to firmly enshrine the goal of EU accession in the constitution. In 2019, this goal was enshrined, along with that of joining NATO. Ukraine was preparing to formally apply for EU membership in 2024 in order to join the European Union in 2030. So here you can already see how complex and bureaucratic the process of joining the EU is. Before countries can become EU members, for example, they have to transpose the applicable EU laws into national law and fulfill a number of criteria. In the end, it is not the Commission alone that decides, but the 27 EU countries, which all have to give the green light unanimously. This process usually takes 10 years or even longer. Montenegro, Serbia and Turkey, for example, applied for membership over a decade ago and are still stuck in negotiations. Even if the whole process could now be pushed through more quickly in the wake of the war, the conflict is also likely to be one of the main reasons why the EU will be reluctant to admit Ukraine. It therefore remains to be seen how the war will develop and how the EU's attitude will change accordingly. Incidentally, if Ukraine really were to join the EU, it would be the poorest country in the Union, with a per capita gross domestic product that would be around a third of that of Bulgaria, currently the poorest EU member state. In terms of geography and population, however, it would be one of the largest countries in the EU.